Hello, my name is Anita Potter from Anita Potter Productions, and today we're going to continue mixing this song, focusing on the snare. Now, in the last video, I asked about the kick and the phase relation, if I needed to uh, invert one of them. So I'm going to check it out right now. So we're going to finish the kick and then move on to the snare. So I'm going to look at the two kick outs. So I'm going to middle mouse scroll up to a point where I can see what I'm doing. And zoom in really far. And they all look like they should be in phase with each other. So I don't believe I have to flip anything. So possibly they were flipped when they were rec being recorded. So I am going to tab to the first transient on the kick in. And I'm going to look and see that I need to drag the kick outs a little over to the left. So I'm going to double click on the first one, hold shift, double click on the second one and then hold down my alt button and drag to the left a little bit. Then I'm gonna scroll back out. And I'm gonna solo these three real quick and give a listen. Sounds good. So I'm going to stop right there. And our kick is done. Now, you may notice it's a little different in the background. I was working on a different project and I needed more grid lines. So I'm going to give you a little quick tip on how to accomplish that. So up here in your little, little button toolbar, this is the grid lines and they're enabled. I'm going to right click on it. My settings, I have show the grid, line spacing. I have it set to quarter notes. I do believe that's how it's, how it goes. Yeah, it's set to quarter. So anytime you need anything more than what the default setting is, you'll right click on your grid settings and then select from this drop down box. And there's quite a lot of settings for that. So I, I put it on a quarter. If I needed to go to 1 16th, I can do that too but that's how that works. Also, um, a comment that was given to me on um, Facebook was about when I accidentally moved one of my tracks and I moved it back, I didn't know this existed, I didn't know what it was, it, but it's a lock function and it's right here. Locking right now is off. Clicking it turns it on. Settings, you can get to it by also right clicking Checkboxes enable locking. Items prevent left and right movement. I'm also going to cl uh, click on items prevent up and down movement. So my tracks aren't, if I accidentally grab a track and move it somewhere or move it down, it won't happen. So now that's on. So I'm going to rewind at the beginning and scroll back out. And now we're going to work on the snare. <clears throat> So I'm not entirely sure what these two snares are. So I'm going to zoom in on them and look. Not sure if they are samples or not. They look really clean in between. So I'm gonna solo them real quick. Turn my snapping off and listen to them. Yeah, I believe they are samples, so I'm going to unsolo those. I'm going to mute them, and then I'm going to open my track manager. Find my two muted tracks. Snare D28. And we're going to hide those. get those out of the way. So in order to get the snare top in phase with the overheads, 
I'm gonna drag the overheads above the snare top track here. So I'm gonna find my overheads. I'm gonna double click on the first one, shift double click on the second one, and then drag them up to my snare. And then I prefer to have my overheads above my snare so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna tap to that first transient, or maybe not, that's not the first one. Helps if I hit rewind, scroll back out. There we go, there that is. Now the overheads are slightly out with it. So I'm going to quickly unlock, I'm gonna double click, and then shift double click again. I'm gonna zoom in a little further and I'm gonna hold down Alt, drag those over. Get them to line up. It's never gonna line up perfectly, but we can get really close. So I'm gonna put my lock back on, zoom back out, and then listen to the snare top and the overheads. Okay, and then that part's done. So, my snare top, snare side, and snare bottom are the focus for today. All right, we're gonna go and grab an EQ and I've gotten quite a lot of plugins recently. So I'm just gonna select the Cocos section under all plugins because we're only using stock plugins. I'm gonna hit my re EQ, press okay. Make that larger. I'm going to find a section on the snare top. Oh, but first, seeing as we got our snare top lined up, gonna go ahead and turn the overheads into a stereo track. So I'm gonna double click, shift double click, actions, custom stereo track, and that's all done. And we'll just go ahead and delete that empty track. Now, snare top. I'm going to do a high pass Actually, we're going to find a section and just turn my snapping back on. Maybe, there we go. And then click in there, press our little repeat button. Okay, how about we just solo the snare top Oops. Put that back at a hundred. Go to take click on that second one. Two fifty. And gain that down. Narrow that Q a little bit. Down some more. I'll take this one and I'm going to boost it and narrow that. So and find the frequency. Okay. 
press stop, turn off the repeat, escape out of that and unsolo that. I'm going to listen to, well, I should have left that section repeat. I'm gonna listen to the uh, snare side. Maybe if I stop playing the whole track, I can listen to it. Oops. Grab my EQ. Oops. Come on. This is being fussy today. Going to high pass. I'm also going to low pass. Just to get tame some of that cymbal bleed. Okay. It's good on that one. I'm going to listen to the snare bottom. Grab another EQ. If I find the snare, the snare bottom is rattling too much, I may gain that down. But right now, seeing as I'm not playing the whole track, I'm going to leave it alone. And press stop. Now let's escape. Well, let's just solo the drums and see what we have so far. <laughs> Let's extend that selection a little further. It's a massive kick. I may have to readdress that later. But so far, that's, that's all I have left on the snare. And next time, we will go over all... The uh, hi-hats, cymbals, all of that. Hopefully we can get these drums finished up in the next couple of videos. I know it's quite boring having to go over drums, but they, it's, it's necessary. So that's it. How do you like to mix your drums? Do you have anything that's a challenge for you to do? Something or any insights that might help other people when they go to mix their drums for the first time? Leave comments and questions down below in the uh, comments section. And you can tell it's late at night because I just got off of work. It's like almost 3.30 a.m. So I'm rambling. So I will finish this video now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.